And welcome everybody to PC Tech and Gaming. My name is Kyle and today we're testing the GeForce 8800 GTX and doing a bit of a retrospective and also can it run Crisis in 2020 on 2006 era hardware. That's the main thing I wanted to find out. So here we have our test subject in question, my Inno3D 8800 GTX, which I found nice and cheaply on eBay. These actually um, can get a pretty good deal on these when you look hard enough. On the top left of the screen, I've notated the specs, which are pretty much stock standard for an 8800 GTX. Although later in the video, we will be uh, seeing if we can up the clocks a bit and make our uh, GTX into an Ultra to see if it helps with uh, pushing out any more frames for Crisis. But um, yeah, this is a great example of the card. Works perfectly, no issues at all. I haven't replaced the thermal paste on it as yet, but uh, I may do that in the future, but I didn't see a reason to for this video. Next up, I have my vintage Core 2 Quad uh, test system. Um, Built specifically for the purpose of testing this old hardware, I purchased all the various bits off of eBay as well from high quality resellers, um, but obviously built it in a new case with a new power supply and a new CPU heatsink on the QX6700. There's our 8800 GTX in the system there. So this motherboard is an ASRock Dual Core SATA 2, which has both AGP and PCI Express, which makes it great for testing this old hardware. The only caveat though, that we have though is that the PCI Express X16 slot runs in uh, X4, PCI Express X4 mode, um, which may bottleneck the 8800, but I'm not entirely sure. But we're still going to give it a go anyway. I will test the 8800 once again in a system with full uh, PCI Express X16 lanes uh, in the future, uh, so watch out for that video. But yeah, we'll get straight into the benchmarks and see how we go.
And so that's it, our benchmarking is complete and uh, pretty successful. Um, the card did run Crisis. Uh, how playable it was, of course, depended on the resolution. So we did three tests, all at 1280 by 1024 as I reckon this is a pretty standard high-end-ish resolution for the time. So on very high we got an average of 21 FPS, on medium we got an average of 37 FPS, and on low we got an average of 55 FPS. Definitely more playable on low, um, not quite as playable on very high, but semi-playable on medium, I could do that, although it may be a bit less than desirable. But anyway, on to the overclocking of our beast. Looking at our test bench here, um, we do have quite good airflow coming in through the front. These two fans are 1400 RPM fans and they're actually pushing out quite a bit of air both onto the CPU and the graphics card. So I figured it would be definitely a good uh, good airflow situation to try and uh, boost our 8800 GTS, uh, GTX up to ultra speeds. So I thought we need to create a basis for our overclock and to do that, we're going to run a 3D Mark 06 test at stock speeds just to see what we're going to get as our score. For our score, we got 10,103. So this now puts us in good stead to start instituting some overclocking just to see how far we can take at 8800. Next, we moved on to our partial overclocking, um, and I took the core clock to 594 and the memory clock to 972, which yielded us a 3D Mark score of 10,250, so not that much of an increase on our base score. So now we'll uh, open up uh, MSI Afterburner here, and I'll show you the core clocks that I got in place. I was very happy to have this partial overclock um, be stable because I wasn't sure how this card was going to overclock at all being it's old and I haven't really replaced the thermal paste or anything like that so I was hoping that it uh, would still have some go in it. Also too when the GeForce 8800 GTX's or 8800's in general were launched Nvidia w didn't actually allow board partners to overclock them as the G80 core was already at its limit pretty much. That's why I'm aiming for only an 8800 ultra overclock. So now I moved on to a further overclock where I thought I'd push the memory up a little bit more to uh, 10,026 megahertz up from 972, which yielded us a score of 10,332. So it seems that bit of a boost in memory did help quite a bit. Uh, an extra 72 points there on the, the score. So next was to uh, on to overclocking our GeForce 8800 GTX up to GeForce 8800 Ultra speeds. I also decided to increase the fan speed to 100% and lock it at 100% just to make sure the card could remain 100% stable as possible when, and we could achieve this overclock. I'm um, telling you a little sneaky there as well as that uh, I already did do a test uh, with the card without the card at 100% fan speed and it did crash so I decided to push the fan speed up to 100% to see whether it was possible to get our 8800 to the ultra speeds. So off we went into 3D Mark to find out. And there we have it. It appears our overclock remains stable with 100% fan speed. 
10,474 was our final 3D Mark score. Um, so, yeah, I'm pr gonna say I'm pretty happy with that to attain those speeds out of this card without replacing thermal paste or checking under the hood, as it were. So now it was time to be on to uh, testing how this overclock helped us in crisis running at 1080p on very high settings. So let's jump into it and see how we went. And there you go. So it appears our 8800 GTX could overclock to 8800 ultra speeds under 100% fan speed. And it did complete our crisis benchmark run, which is fantastic. Uh, however, the performance increase wasn't that great. Our average frame, race, frame rate increased from uh, 15 to 16, and our maximum frame rate increased from 19 to 20. Our minimum frame rate didn't move at all, still stayed at 12. So it appears that our overclock, although successful, wasn't entirely helpful in bringing us um, some more frames in Crisis at 1080p on very high settings. But still a testament to this old GPU that it is able to hold up uh, in Crisis all these years later. I really did want this uh, video to not only be about testing the 8800 GTX and its might against Crisis, but also testing it in a uh, computer system that was relevant to the period at which Crisis and 8800 GTX came out. The only one caveat which I did not foresee being too much of an issue, which may be an issue but I'm not 100% sure though, is that this ASRock motherboard runs PCI Express uh, 1.0 at 4x speeds in the X16 slot. So I do not know whether this has impeded my benchmark results in any way, but I will be uh, doing another test um, in the future, having 8800 GTX in a full 16x slot, uh, just to see if that will be the case, that it did actually bottleneck my results here, but I'm still not 100% sure about that. But at any rate, um, the test which I set out to do has now been completed, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with the results. And now on to some uh, information about uh, the G80 and its fantastic design for the time. G80 was a revolutionary design for NVIDIA, going from the G47 series um, that had a fixed, uh, discrete design um, to a unified design in the G48 series. In these images here, you'll see uh, on the green image that the uh, left hand side in the discrete design represents uh, GeForce 7 and the unified design represents GeForce 8. To the right of that image is also a layout of the G80 core design. Um, the G80 core uh, could still do vertex geometry and pixel shading and more, but the difference is they are all right able to run on the same set of execution resources. In order to make this happen, the shader core needed to be made more general purpose and suitable for multiple usage scenarios. 
The design NVIDIA came up with, while very complex, is very powerful. And the architecture is able to use thread management hardware to dispatch different types of instructions on the shader core. As vertices complete, their output can be used as input to geometry shaders back at the top of the shader core. Geometry shader output is then used as input to pixel shaders, therefore making the arch architecture extremely uh, robust and multi-purpose. The sheer size of the G80 chip was absolutely enormous for the time. The chip consisted of 681 million transistors and was built upon the almost old at the time 90 nanometer process. As a reference point, ATI's Radeon X1900 XTX was also best based on the 90 nanometer process, yet it only had 384 million transistors. Also, NVIDIA's previous high-end GPU, the G71, based on the GeForce 7900 GTX, was also built on a 90 nanometer process, but used only 278 million transistors. That just goes to show how ginormous this chip truly was for its time. Such a massive GPU took NVIDIA a great deal of time and money. Four years and $475 million to be exact, which was at the time NVIDIA's longest production uh, and money spent on a GPU. Despite the very high clock speeds on the die and a very ridiculous uh, 681 million transistor count, the power consumption on, of NVIDIA's G80 uh, GPU is quite reasonable given its target. On average, the G80 uh, system used about 8% less power than one outfitted with an ATI Radeon X950 XTX at the time. As you can see in the picture above, the G80 GPU um, with a Kentsfield Core 2 Quad um, Extreme Edition CPU on top, like the one in my test system. You can see the size comparison here. The G80 GPU is actually bigger than the CPU. It was truly a humongous GPU for the time and was definitely a revolutionary game changer for the world of GPUs. And with that brings us to the end of our video. So thank you very much for watching our GeForce 8800 GTX retrospective and Can It Run Crisis uh, in 2020 on 2006 era hardware. Well, yes it can. So that's it. Um, also one thing to note too is that towards midway through the video there I started using uh, video recordings of my PC screen um, for the game capture in the 1080p video, that's because the Core 2 Quad QX6700 was unable to actually uh, render the game and record the video at the same time and create a usable MP4 file for my editing software. Uh, it was just not quick enough, so that's the only way I could do it. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you like the video hit like if you didn't like it hit dislike and if you like the content please subscribe to the channel thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one